Bum bum. Hello and welcome to My Mom's Basement presented by Barstool Sports and Threechi. I am your host, Robbie Fox. With me is my co-host, Clem. And we are here live and in person this week to recap The Mandalorian, Chapter 21, The Pirate. This was a good one, Clem. My favorite of the season so far. People were hyped. Uh, I saw it before I watched the episode. I saw people saying how that was real Star Wars and right there, right? So it's always good when we get one of those episodes. And I feel like we're going to have a run here. We're going to have a Boba kind of run where not the book of Boba Fett, but the Mandalorian magazine inside the book of Boba Fett, we're going to have just hits on hits on hits coming. That's, that's at least what I'm hoping here. We better. Cause we got three episodes left. That's like kind of scary. Yeah. Only three episodes left for the whole season. It feels like, I don't want to say we're just getting into it, but there was a bit of a interesting, like, I don't know. We talked about it last week, like no hype zone. For the first yeah. few episodes, no, and now definitely. this week I've been seeing way more people tweeting about it, even just this episode. Do we say, uh, like, where's the Mandalorian hype? Do we put out, like, a TikTok there and kind of just become the, the bad guys of, of the Star Wars universe and just have people just roasting us and see how many views we can get on it? Maybe. I mean, last week we put out identical TikToks that were one saying me saying the CGI on Grogu looks amazing. One you saying the CGI on Grogu looks a little off. When he jumps. When he jumps. Just when he jumps. The one that you put out has 335,000 views. Mine has yet to hit 1,000. Kevin goes, I just did KFC Radio real quick, just a quick little uh, jump in. And he goes, do you have any hate or something? I'm like, yeah, look at my mentions. I have plenty. And he's like, well, but like based on a take, I go, I think Star Wars fans hate me now. Maybe. But I said, if we're the Mean Nerd Podcast and we have a take or maybe we start acting like we don't know anything about like the way hyperdrives work. We can go crazy viral in Star Wars world, and then we you know, come back to Eric and Dave down the road and be like, got to save the basement, boys. We're big time now. The dark side is a path to <laughs> things that the Jedi don't teach you. Have you ever heard the tale, <laughs> the the tale, tale of Darth of... Clickbait, the wise? <laughs> um, but yeah, follow us on TikTok if you haven't already, and make sure you like this video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. We're getting up there in subscribers. Because we're doing it really early in the video, or Conor McGregor is still carrying us. But nonetheless, we, we said it early. We're doing it live in person. Yep. Did you hear that slap? Let's do that slap again. Oh, oh that was that a hard one. one. That was a bad one. Boom! Look at that. That's a live slap here. That was a live slap, and we're live and in person this week, so hopefully we'll be able to do more of these in the future. Hopefully for, like, the finale, that would be cool. That would be awesome. Even movies coming up. we got Guardians 3. We'll have to do something in yes. person for that. I drove down today. It's my first time driving to HQ for like a – because I used to come in at the first thing in the morning, yeah. get then have make sure you're in by 10 or else Dave's going to yell at you. Today I was like, I could get some work done, drive down. So, yeah, we, we got to do this more. This is beautiful. So let's get into the episode. It is Chapter 21. It's titled The Pirate. It starts with Grief Karga. He's kind of restructuring Navarro. Oh, why don't we put this closer to the ports? Why don't we put this over here? He's magistrate. That's what magistrate – I didn't well, know what magistrate High magistrate. High, excuse me. High, high magistrate. magistrate. I apologize. I apologize. A giant pirate ship arrives scaring off all the townspeople and it is Gorian Shard from earlier in the season awesome awesome design he was also in Game of Thrones I saw this actor he was like one of Khaleesi's uh side henchmen he was uh I think the dude at Karth the um the big fella at Karth who yes. was like oh I got your back and then he basically double crossed her he and flip flopped got, got his ass thrown in a vault it was such a badass yeah, move snip snap snip snap he snip snap <laughs> she snip snapped her ass it, it like got me really uh Long for like those were the good Thrones days. That's when we started yeah. cooking. So yeah, good. I like that guy too. I, I, there's something about the actor. I'm like I, just, I like that guy. I just think he's good. And I like that we still had the um, the IG statue was up, yep. and it's still just just missing parts. Yeah, and I saw later on when we see the Fricks, like they cut to him real quick. IG 11's parts are still in there. Uh, so the shop. workshop, like the 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 the, the hot rod is still up on the exactly. Stats and they're working on it right now. Exactly, <laughs> he's still looking for that piece, and, that part. Uh, that's right. Yeah. So we're still, they're still. I forgot they're looking for the part. And as soon as they came on the screen, AJ goes, "Bad baby, bad baby." <laughs> so the Fricks have made an impression on the next generation. Who, by the way, AJ, we're watching Star Wars right now. I, I watched. We're watching all old Disney movies in general: Cinderella, Pinocchio, and then we're also watching Star Wars. Obsessed with Star Wars and as a Vader guy, which again, I guess I should have seen this coming, right? He's like, dad, can you play Darth Vader song? And he just like plays with his toys. He goes, dun, dun, dun. (laughs) I was scared of Darth Vader as a kid. You had to be too, right? Terrified. And he loves him. He's not even five years old and he loves Vader. So that's, uh, that's a true sign of him being your son. You love (laughs) Thanos. He loves Vader. It runs in the family, runs in the genes. 
Um, Gordon Shard shows up in holographic form, and he calls Karga out for being a hypocrite. I've been calling everyone out for being hypocrites this season. You're and I, I was actually like, all right, you're getting me on his side. I love my guy, Grief Karga, but he was like, look at you. You're a politician now. You were a fucking pirate just like me not too long ago. Imagine, like, uh, Portnoy in, like, 10 years is, like, this fancy guy in Florida. He's, like, trying to, like, be a politician. And someone calls, hey, Dave, you want to go back to the shit the Dev Nest didn't get rid of here? It's like, I remember, when, like, it's the same kind of thing, right? Like, yeah. That, I didn't, I forgot that's what Grief was when we first met him. Yeah. I you mean, know? he was a scoundrel, against, some he was would basically say. against Mando. He turned on him. Yeah. They, they were shooting at each other, came after the baby. It is crazy that we got past all that. And you know what? He has redeemed himself. Like, I love Grief Karga, but if I'm calling out Bo-Katan for all her hypocritical statements i should be calling out grief karga as well yeah it's it's so hard though and i think you can agree with me on this carl weathers is just so fucking like like apollo i should hate fucking apollo after the first how could you though he's just charismatic he he gets it he's calling him the italian chicken and all this stuff and it's like then obviously we have arrested development you have all the different uh Carl Weathers thing. So, yeah, I'm with you, Bob. So Karga tries to bluff him at first. He's like, we're under protection from the New Republic. They'll be right here. I'm sure they're they're pulling up any second now. And he's like, no, you're not. He's like, listen, they can't even protect the mid-rim. You think they're protecting the outer rim out here? They're completely swamped. They ain't coming. And I know you didn't sign that agreement anyway. So he just starts raining fire down on the city. Rain, fire. Big time Thanos vibes. Big time those? Thanos vibes. Yes. The cannons were the uh, exact same. Slap. Live slap. Boom. <laughs> Live slap. And it was... Uh, Check, tune into the dozen tonight. By the time this is out, the dozen will already be out. I used Avengers Endgame as my niche. So tune in, see if I got that right. I did not get it right for Avengers Infinity War. So it's a redemption game. Honkers versus Experts, a game that will go down in infamy. Um, I will say this. Could I, can I give a little spoiler on mine, too? Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. ZD versus your mom, also. We'll go down in infamy. A double infamy week. A on double the infamy week. Oh, shit. Never before seen. <laughs> So we go to an X-Wing hideout bar. I don't know. It was kind of a Top Gun vibe when they're all yes, just sitting there by call. the bar. It was cool. Um, Dave Filoni, Rick Famuita, and Deborah Chow were all sitting at the bar. Oh, they were. The three X-Wing pilots that we saw, three directors. And Captain Tiva, Mr. Did You Lose Anyone on Alderaan, <laughs> uh, is just sitting there. He receives a message from Grief Karga. He says, hey, can I use your viewer? I thought that was a cool word for, like, the holograph telephone. And it's a message from Karga saying, hey, we need help. you got to come here. Pirates are invading. He says, I'm going to send this to Coruscant, see what they say. Someone sits down next to him. His name is Zeb Clem. This is a guy from Star Wars Rebels. He's from the animated series. People love Is that Zeb. the purple guy? It is. Oh, that was my notes. Um, I fucking love the purple guy. I, I don't like That guy just has the look. Whatever it is. His CGI looks so good. Looks awesome, yeah. And, and they needed to nail that if they were going to bring him in. I assume he'll be part of the Ahsoka series because she knows that whole Rebels. They call okay. them the, the Spectre Rebels, the Spectre crew. They all ride on a ship called the Ghost. It's Zeb, Hera, Ezra, Kanan, and Sabine Wren. And they have a droid chopper as well who's kind of their R2-D2. Okay. Um, and at the end of Rebels, he returns to his home world. His... Uh, kind was almost extinct because of the Empire. So that's why he joins the Rebellion. He goes back to his homeworld at the end of Rebels, spoilers, to try to rebuild the civilization. Now he's just back in the Rebellion or the, the new Resistance. Interesting. I assume rebuilding the civilization did not go well. I, <laughs> thing, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. But he tells him, he tells Captain Tiva, hey, they're swamped in Coruscant. Like, they haven't responded in weeks. They're not helping these guys. They're not going to see your message. So Tiva's like, I guess I got to go face to face. I liked how they were using Coruscant as if it was like D.C. Yes. You know, like the way people say, oh, Washington, they're, you know, Red all swamped. And, everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> that's how they were talking about Coruscant. I was like, oh, shit. All right. That's, I guess, the new D.C. And I imagine it's like Coruscant. They're just like, yeah, we have a million fucking things going on. Like, it just shows how, and I think we're going to see it, I think, throughout this series and the other series how the first order rises just because it's just like there's no way to kind of like get everything taken care of and i think they're they just there's too many holes to fill in the boat yeah. right i uh, also I, I hate to say oh i don't want to get fucking people upset at me the fucking uh grief cargo twitter or, or whatever <laughs> but if you're the high magistrate yeah can you do more than just send one message to one rebellion fighter or, i'm glad you said that because Mando's his guy at this point. Yes. Why not just hit up Mando right away? Now, you know that the New Republic is, he's like, we're not going to bow down to another bureaucracy far off, blah, blah, blah. And then you call him right away. That's tough. Why, why not call your boy Mando? You know, he's not, you know, he's not the popo. He's the actual guy who could come and like 
wreck shit on your planet. He has done it for you before. So he, he owes you like you guys owe each other kind of a thing. I will say the only reason in my mind, the only reason he didn't do that is because Mando is like is to him as Trent is to us. You send Trent a text message, <laughs> yeah. you know you're getting ghosted. It's nothing True. personal. He's just not a text guy. Mando may not even own a phone for all I fucking No, you're right. right. That's such a good point. That's Yeah, he's like, I don't want to double text him. I texted him last week trying to get him to come back for the, the land, and he said no. So, yeah, he's like, no, I can't hit him up. I actually just said on KFC Radio, we talked about Trent, and I said I'm going to just, because he doesn't respond to my stuff, He'll respond like once in a blue moon or he'll yep. hit you up. At, and I'm going to just put him on a chain with my wife and we're going to just, I'm going to send all the kids pictures to my wife. And I said, Trent doesn't have the heart to block me. No. I don't think he does. So. I don't think, well, see, I don't know with Trent because the first day that I met Trent or the first day I got hired by Barstool, really, I hadn't met Trent yet. He followed me on Twitter. And that night he unfollowed me because I was tweeting too many wrestling gifts, he said. Which, in fairness, back then I was. You were. I remember Bob Fox. I was like, whoa, Bob. And you were talking about the graps. I'm like, there's a lot of wrestling here. This is a, a lot, lot of wrestling. Heavy technical wrestling. We're not talking DX chops and, you know, girls flashing people. No. We're talking hardcore wrestling we're, stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, we're talking technical chain wrestling and stuff like that. I was tweeting underground, like independent wrestling shows. And Trent was like, I'd had enough. Now, that did help me uh, curate my Twitter towards more of a mainstream audience. That Trent, Trent basically trained you. He was the your Trent Yoda. Bump. He was yeah. your Yoda. He got you there. So I will say grief. If he sent out other messages to more people, fine. If he just sent one to this one guy who was fucking so tone deaf, he asked if, any, if he lost anyone on Alderaan. The one guy he knows in the resistance, I yeah. guess. He's like, I got one contact now that Cara Dune's off doing whatever she's Which, doing. by the way, uh, shout out to the person that pointed this out to me. I, I forgot the name. Uh, when we said, kidding around a few episodes ago, Cara Dune went back to her home planet. She pretty much it's did. Alderaan. Yikes. Oh, went back to her home planet. Yeah, she don't got a home planet. <laughs> don't got a home that's, planet Bob. We're as insensitive that's as Captain Tiva. You're gonna you're, you're gonna now get canceled for what you said about Gina Carano's character. That, what a fucking guy. I might. You won't. I might. Well, I feel like no. I feel like once someone gets canceled, it's almost fair game to say whatever you want. Oh, about they a canceled can say person. all the mean they, stuff. It, to them. It's free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one one thing that I love that I got to tell all the people about that you also love is Game Time. This is the exclusive mm -hmm. ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals and tickets to sports, concerts, shows, and more. They guarantee the lowest price, and they've cracked the code on how to score these deals on last-minute tickets. There's a bunch of concerts coming up that I want to go to right down the block at the Garden. I want to go see Paramore. I want to go see Blink-182. They're playing a couple times in the city, so I want to make sure I go to those concerts. There was an event, I know for you, that you wanted to see for a long time. Were you able to make it? I was, Bob. Right at the shows and more part of that read right there. I went to see Bluey's Big Play, it's called, with the kids. And it was tremendous. I've been talking about it for a while. It was so much fun. Um, and I will say, for people that want to see the show, it's like... 45 minutes to an hour. It's it kind of wants you. I wish there was a little more, maybe an yeah. intermission split up. But none of the there was not one kid who was starting to itch in their seat and ready to get out. So I will say maybe shorter is better. But the fact it was on game time for the price you're getting for it, you don't feel like you lost anything. Exactly. Like I got the kids out for the house for a bit. We got to stretch our legs. We were not stuck inside on a rainy day. Absolutely perfect. So a good way to save some money, get some last minute tickets. Perfect. Super easy to use too, right? Extremely easy. Dad, I'm a dad. I'm starting to lose my tech stuff. You know, I had the um, closed captionings in Spanish for Last of <laughs> yep. Us. I couldn't figure out how to change it. I could get the game time stuff. It was a breeze, and you could get a code to get some money off. We have opening day coming up. I got my buddies who said he's going to hit up Yankees opening day using game time. He said, what's your code? Oh, well, the code, Clem, is MMB. You go to Game Time, the app or the website, you enter your email, and you redeem that code MMB, and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but this purchase process really is so quick and easy. Once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone, no printer needed. Uh, and the app allows you to share tickets easily with friends via text so you could get into the game seamlessly. That is a huge thing. If you have an unreliable friend that's late to everything, just text them the ticket. Don't even worry about it. Then you don't have to wait for him to get in. Trent is unreliable. Trent could is be unreliable. unreliable. Uh, it's tough because if Trent says he's going to be there, unreliable you know, if right he there. says he's going to be there, he'll be there. But he usually doesn't say he'll be there. That's the thing. So it's, I don't know if unreliable is the word, but... You can't rely on him. You know him, who so. is reliable? Our guy Tiva here. At least he tries, right? He the does new try. Not, I would not go to a concert with the New Republic. No, they're the narcs. Yes, yeah, you're like, narcs. I'd rather not go than go with them. <laughs> so he goes to see the Colonel Tuttle, 
who is uh, from SNL, Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows is canon in Star Wars. Crazy. Was, I couldn't believe yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, that guy kind of looks like Tim Meadows. And I'm not I'm crazy. Like, he was an SNL guy, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, SNL, and I always associate him with uh, Awesome Blossom Sauce coming out of my nose in the office. Oh, yeah. yeah and the, and I, uh, baby, I, baby. I go with uh, Mean Girls a lot, too. Yes, Mean Girls. Great role in Mean Girls. Uh, was he the ladies' man? That was him, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I like Tim Meadows. He just, he's almost too happy to be working for the New Republic. That should be someone who looks like, they had cubicles. Yeah, they And did. I'm like, oh, man, like New Republic is straight up cubicle hell. And I'm like, this is why it's not going to work. It's like when you see cubicles at Barstool. It's like yeah. you were not built. You were built in an idea of rebellion, not cubicles. And when I see cubicles here, I'm like, this doesn't feel like the real. And I mean, we're pretty close to Dave becoming a high magistrate somewhere <laughs> and pirates calling him out yeah. on his bullshit. Pretty much. And I, I liked the them pointing out like, hey, this isn't a rebellion anymore. We're a fucking office now. So make sure you put your... Uh, you know, slips through and your you get TPS permissions. TPS reports have to be approved. <laughs> all the reports, everything like that. So he barely even listens to the card call for help. He turns it off halfway through. He's like, ah, I get the gist. He would have been doing the jerk off motion if it was a phone call. Yeah. You know, like he, he, like looking at someone like this fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, Kane, Elia Kane from a couple weeks ago walks into the room and she lets Tuttle know like, oh yeah, Navarro's not even a new Republic world. They didn't sign the agreement. And he's like, well, we've got worlds that did sign the agreement that are all backlogged. So I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to help you out here. Tiva's pissed. He tries to warn them about a bigger threat out there, which has been looming over the whole season. Yep. I like that looming threat, the way they're talking about this big threat out there. Um, he even makes a slight uh, he, a, a slight at Kane on his way out. He's like, oh, yeah, isn't that what they taught you in the Imperial? Sounds a real Imperial way of thinking. And she's like, no, I just had to be liberated to see the light, blah, blah, blah. She's like a triple, quadruple, quintuple agent for somebody <laughs> at this point. I don't know if it's for Thrawn. I don't know if it's for Gideon. We saw somebody broke Gideon out at the yes. end of the episode, so I don't know if she's involved in that or if she just wants to be involved in that. Something's going on with her. She's on, like, four different sus lists right now. She is. <laughs> She's every on, category. Yes, every category, no matter who you're – if you're a Mandalorian, if you're with the New Republic, if you're with the Empire from back in the day, if you're part of the Uprising First Order – this bitch is sus. And I have to say, I'm going to, um, you know, we say this could help like fix past star or star Wars events that happened in the future. Yep. Like we can see all this stuff and be like, Oh, Snoke isn't so weird now. I feel like this actress is much better as a bad guy than a good guy or a quadruple agent, wherever the fuck, whatever she is. she is. Yeah. Because we saw her in Ant-Man yep. and we lambasted, her, for being, or I did at least. I don't remember if you. I did. wasn't a big fan. We weren't either. a big fan, and I, we thought there was a chance maybe of an interview coming up. With See, this. I thought that, and then I went back into the emails, and I was a little relieved. She was on the email sheet offered to Barstool, and I forgot to put in for her. Mm. I was a little relieved when I saw that though, because we did. She could have been good in the base about this. I was going to say, we weren't very nice about her character in Ant-Man. She is very good in Star Wars. She works. Some I, wrestlers are just better as heels. Yes, I think, and I think that's it. And they basically, her character, without giving anything away about Ant-Man, was basically a Star Wars character. But yeah. she was a good guy Star Wars character, and I didn't like, I just didn't like the entire vibe. You watched Ant-Man again. You said it was better the second time than the first. I stand by everything we said. I, I don't take anything back, but it was better without the civil war expectations yes when yeah. you watch it again <laughs> Dial back and you just take it as a light ant-man movie you're like all right pretty good yeah now that's a whole new can of worms that they might have to recast kang because jonathan majors went and got in, himself yeah. into some trouble this week that's a story for another time yeah we'll see what happens to he said she said police running it's ugly them. right now no it's, boy, it's, no. it's real ugly uh, not, not the vibes we want in the basement yeah now for this character though i feel like like, the, I'm having almost, like, Andor-level feelings towards this totally. character. I'm like, I hate this. She's going to keep fucking us over here. Yeah. I don't like her, Bob. I don't like her one bit. It, it is a nice way to tie the whole season together. Though. Yeah. That one, like, it felt almost like a, not a one-off episode, but a little bit like that. It ties it all in together now, and even the pirates from the first episode. Yes. Getting them in together, it's like, all right, there's way more of a cohesive thread throughout the whole season now than there was even last episode. Yeah, so we're having some fun action. We're seeing some stuff come, come together just with the Mandalorian storyline. But now we're bringing all this. This is kind of how Andor ended, right? Pretty where much, yeah. And you get this beautiful harmony where everything's coming. Look at me just dropping some fucking Harmony. Like, yeah, I'm talking metaphors. I'm getting, it's like poetry or rhymes is coming out of my mouth next if you don't watch out. Pretty much. So <laughs> Tiva goes and he finds the Mando covert very easily and immediately. I'm like... 
how did this guy find Amando Covert like that? Apparently, they're not doing a very good job hiding. Yeah. If he could just roll up on it and see Bo Katan's ship. It's fucking R5D4. This guy, he's, he's a rat. I'm telling you, R5D4 is the goddamn pits. He's a coward. He's a rat. You know, he was probably like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to throw the beacon on. So if anyone wants to rescue me from these guys, because I'm a coward, scared to get out of a ship, you have one job, dude, and it's do whatever the fucking Mandalorian tells you to do. That's how Pelimoto programmed you. And he, So I'm not a fan of this guy. However, he did play an important role here. I he will did. give him that much. We needed him here, but just the fact that he snitched, and he was probably snitching like you said, like, he made me walk out on Mandalore before he checked the air. And it's like, is that really why you're calling, or yeah. is it about Grief Karga? He's no better than Aliyah. Mm, good point. I mean, he could be a double for agent. R5? Yeah, he probably was the one who he was probably working on those fucking tie bombers, blowing up a little Mandalorian, <laughs> Mandalore babies, Mandalore. Um, so Tiva walks up on the covert. Paz Vizsla is the first one to greet him, and he is not a fan of these guys, these these New Republic soldiers. So he's like, "You should get out. Uh, we'll, we'll have to relocate. We should probably kill him anyway. Like, let's just get rid of this guy." And he's like, "I swear, I'm here about one of your friends." Throws Mando the hologram. He's like, one of your friends doesn't help. Like, I'm doing a nice thing here by telling you you should go help him out, but that's on you. So Mando's like, we don't even really have ships, but let's try this ship. So he talks to the whole covert about the situation. He asks for their help, and then Paz Vizsla stands up. We got some previously on with Paz Vizsla as well this I week. I skipped it, so I went in blank, not knowing what was going to happen. I felt like— So I was yeah. worried that Paz was about to go back to his ways where he challenges the Mandalorian. But he has a moment here, just like out of the dark night, when they hand the prisoner that detonator. And he's like, I'm going to do what we should have done a long <laughs> time ago. Shout out Debo, R.P. Tenny. Throws it right out the window. That's kind of what Paz Vizsla does here. He says, this is the way. Why should we put our lives on the line for all these people, for this foundling? Because we're fucking Mandalorians. Let's go. And the bo you know, makes the whole plan. They go off on the ship. It was pretty awesome. I love that twist. That got me hyped. Like, they... I think that really did a good job of being like all for one, one for all. Instead you saved my having, son, he said. Yeah, yeah, last week we saw that. And it's like, oh, yeah, like these guys really did come through. Bo, again, sh- shout out to Team Bo, me, basically writing by myself on this podcast <laughs> all season. Mando, when he's playing to them, how about you just say, hey, guys, you don't have to worry about fucking sea dragons and actual dragons killing your fucking kids anymore if we go to this other planet. should have brought that up for sure. Yeah, we'll get a huge plot of land, all this kind of stuff. I just couldn't believe it um i love the holder of the hammer can talk yeah we had our first um family meeting at the house the other day which being a parent having called family meeting is not fun. wow no and it wasn't anything like super serious but the kids were just not listening to us we're like aj turn off the ipad no what like sienna come out here brush your teeth no and they're just telling us no so we fucking we had it <laughs> and my wife brought out the spatula and it was whoever held it could speak. Yes. And AJ goes, can I take this for a second, mommy? He took that in a coaster and he, my mom said, give it back. He's like, no, no. And he took it and he did dunk, dunk, dunk like a gavel. <laughs> and then, and you know what? That is how every fucking meeting should have. There should be yeah. a giant, like a thing. And I love that the hammer, which I feel like the armor is kind of the, like the, 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 the judge, the, the, the leader yeah. of the group. Yeah. The leader of the group. So I liked how they did that. And then um, the other thing I had to ask, is where are these fucking baby dragons that were so important they had to bring them last episode? How many do you think they ate from the time we saw them last episode? I guarantee at least two Mandalorians were hurt, if not one killed by a baby dragon. It's either that or they were like, the CGI budget did not (laughs) sign up for baby dragons in every episode. What were you guys thinking? I would have loved if they were just eating baby dragon meat. And that would have been something. Nice and Even filet. Baby Yoda. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's serving it. He's like putting it on people's plates with the force. It's like, it, uh, that's always the best is when you get a uh, food and instead of a toothpick, they have a pretzel. So you oh, don't even need to yeah. get rid of the toothpick. That's you just nice. eat the pretzel. I always love that. And because when you have a toothpick, if you don't see a trash can around, that's yeah. the worst. You're walking around with a toothpick. You put it in your pocket. You forget about it. That it feels like bad. a thousand pounds, that toothpick, when you're holding yeah, it. Yeah, it really it's the does. Worst. By the way, I made a note 16 minutes before we saw Baby Yoda in this episode. There's a common complaint I see online where people are like, oh, they just use Baby Yoda as a cute trope anytime that there's a, like a scene that they can't figure out. They just cut to Baby Yoda. I don't think that's a real issue in this show at all. No. Uh, I will say it on a TikTok if that'll mean we'll get a lot of views. <laughs> but I don't think – I uh, last episode, there was just a lot of Baby Yoda on screen, and he was just cooing a lot. Or I don't know if it was last episode. Gurgling, cooing, gurgling, cooing, squealing, yeah. <laughs> all the cute words. 
Um, By the way, the pirate ship was awesome. Too. It looked like the yeah. spaceship. It was like this is a pirate. This is a the spaceship of version of a pirate. Kind of like went went together like a pirate ship would. Yeah. Almost. And the way it just loomed over, it had that almost star destroyer pre- yes. presence. That ominous, like, oh no, it's casting a shadow over the whole city. We check in with the villagers, the citizens, whatever you call them, as grief card is leading them out to the lava dunes a couple times. It looks bad. I mean, at the end of the episode, he he does target them. In the middle of the episode, I was like, I hope he doesn't target them because they're all just together in the middle of nowhere right now. He could <laughs> yeah. see them, right? Uh, I'm like, why? And he just has like a random group with him, right? Yeah. And I was like, what, what are we doing here? Again, I don't want to take the H word away from him. But this, he feels more like a magistrate. I think he might have <laughs> jumped the gun. I feel like it's when someone gets a role or promotion and they get the senior, senior director, senior yeah. producer. It's like, maybe we should have just stayed with the magistrate. I don't know. High. I feel like high. If high is like he hits up Luke Skywalker, he hits up a Jedi, he hits up a fucking man like Mando. That is high magistrate. Need more contacts. Shit. Magistrate shit. And hey, it worked out. So, you know, I got my face magistrate shit is going to this fucking guy who does it, who asked if you lost anyone in Alderaan. So I, I'm with you on that, Bob. Uh, let's tell everyone about Factor now. Power up for springtime with Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Get nutritious, chef-prepared meals delivered straight to your door, or you could even change your address, get them sent to the covert on Navarro now if yes. you, you just moved. Uh, no dragon, no baby dragon yet. No, not on the available. menu yet. Not not available yet. Leaves you time and energy to tackle everything on your to-do list. With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Factor has delicious, flavor-packed meals to help you live to the fullest. Choose from keto, vegan, and veggie, calorie-smart, and protein-plus options on the menu every week. I just got some more Factor meals in uh, in the mail today, actually. My Factor box arrived this morning, right before I woke up. With 34 chef-prepared, di- dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. So enjoy these meals for any time of the day. Breakfast options like egg bites, smoothies, and more. Get Factor and enjoy eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals directly to your door, ready in two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash Robbie50, R-O-B-B-I-E-5-0. Use that same promo code, Robbie50, to get 50% off your first box. That's code Robbie50 at factormeals.com slash Robbie50. You'll get 50% off your first box. Truly amazing stuff. I love the, they have a cheesy chicken jalapeno. Mm -hmm. We love cheesy chicken in the basement. The cheesy chicken jalapeno. Woo, so good with factor. Good, easy eating. That's all you can ask for. Exactly. That, That, Grief's whole life would just be easy. If it just that would be like my platform I ran on. Good easy, and if you let Clem to all this right. Good now. easy eating. That makes me want it like you. Just, I, I feel the comfort food in my stomach already. Factor, if you're watching, you could take that. That's that one's on the house. Maybe change it to Clem fifty for a week, just you know, to give a little bump. But good easy. Eating. There we go. <laughs> so Navarro is already a shithole. It's already overrun by pirates. It's like they've taken it back to season one. That quick, it's kind of crazy. I love that Navarro is a living being at this point, where we've seen it. it it's good, it's bad, it's yeah. ugly, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Mando comes in on the N one to start the attack, and he has a great line. It's almost like they have a play on the "Don't never tell me the odds" line, mm-hmm. where someone says, "I think it's Grief Karg is like, be careful, they've got you outnumbered ten to one," and he says, "I like those odds." Yeah, he's like, "I'm sure you do." Did makes she... two of them crash into each other and shit. Did um did the did the purple guy say, "Good luck, you're gonna need it." He I don't know have. if I heard that right. He it, might have. That's one of my favorite lines from uh, Good Luck. You're going to need it when Han says that uh, yeah. to, to Mando. But that was very cool, the the cockpit um, dialogue. Even the, the villains are talking. Yep. Usually you just have just fucking voiceless TIE fighter pilots who have helmets on so they like mean nothing. Getting the character of the pirates along with obviously Mando there, that was just, I thought that was a lot of fun. It was like in that. video games when recently they have the proximity chat. Like if you're close to someone yeah. in the game, you could hear them. I feel like they had that in the sky. Amazing action scenes. The ones in the sky were great. The dog fights in the sky, like more great ones this season. We got great ones earlier in the season. But the actual grounded action scenes where you see Mandalorians doing cool Mandalorian shit, using their like uh, rope, get over yep. here, Scorpion <laughs> style. Scorpion style, yes. That was cool. One of the Mandalorians, very much color scheme, looked like the holiday special Boba Fett. I was like, I wonder if that's a little, a little nod. nod. That would yeah. be nice. And this made me want, in the next Battlefront game, 
pirates and Mandalorians as two teams. Usually it's just like Rebels, Empire, uh, droids, clones. Yeah. This would be an awesome new one to add. I like have I like having pirates. I don't know how big they were in like the expanded universe, such as the cartoons and stuff like that. I liked having these pirates. It was a good ragtag collection of aliens that looked like pirates too. It wasn't yeah. just like one race or whatever. We even had a pussy face. Did you see the pussy face guy? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, there's a pussy guy. face guy. Vane was back. He was yep. from the first episode. He was the kind of the leader of that little yep. pirate gang. He wasn't the gory and shard, but the guy who reported directly to him. He was like the first mate. He's the Smee and, of the group. I and think. they had him spin out and get off uh, again. So we're going to see him probably before the season's over. Shout out my guy Vane for just pulling the fucking uh, ejector button when he knew things were going wrong. That's a pirate, man. That's pirate that life. That is pirate life. <laughs> you know, Are that we going to learn to like like this guy somehow? Bob, I'm falling for him. I'm not gonna. He has a look to him too. He's like has a he like is a memorable guy. So yeah, I, 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 I kind of like him, even though he is like a dick who wanted to just to drink in a school and he started like shooting at people. People could change. Grief changed. Yeah, that's maybe this is Vane the new grief. He could be, or I could see like uh, uh, what, what was his name? Migs Mayfeld, Bill, Bill Burr's character coming yeah. down, killing this guy. I, I'm I'm not gonna like throw the Clem supporting a villain behind a pirate. I know that's not a good idea because pirates yeah. are. They cannot be trusted. Those are those are murky waters. Oh, little pirate, pirate pun. That's why you, you guys you like on YouTube. Subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> Good reviews. The Mandos were fucking shit up with every single weapon in their arsenal, except for one, Bob. The flamethrower. The flamethrower did not come into play <laughs> anywhere here. Maybe someone finally set them straight back at camp, and they were like, "Stop using that shit." Listen, it's embarrassing the whole clan. Maybe they're like, we're going to take the fuel from the flamethrower and put it in your jetpack so you don't run out of it on the way to flying to the dragon. Right? Maybe they figured that was yeah. the thing now. So. Yeah. The pirates get the upper hand when they plant a turret down on the high ground. They It looked like uh, the high magistrate office, like that balcony that they overlooked. Yes, yep. So they plant a turret down, they start hitting it, very video game-like again, where it's like someone gets the turret, and you're like, all right, we're fucked down here. you make the same thing. When you get the turret, it's the best feeling it's in nice. the world. <laughs> I remember in Halo when they created the turret that you could rip off and, like, run with it. That was all time. And then the armor goes full-on. Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Triple H, <laughs> breaks out her sledgehammer and fucks all of these guys up with it. Gruesome hits. Like, we've seen this before out of her. She, I remember she hit some stormtroopers and made their mask, like, shatter into a million pieces. But some of these are just blunt force, like, hammer to the skull. Now you have a dented face. Like, when the coroner comes in to, like, look at the bodies, it's just a lot of, like, laser wound deaths that are pretty clean. And he's like, what the fuck got this guy? Yeah. Did a rancor come in and just eat this guy's head off? It's like, no, nah, the armor came. Shout out to the Hunter Hearst Helmsy because I'm telling you, Triple H's sledgehammer years. I think I much might have did like a taking us to the weekend of just him using the sledgehammer. When he grabs the sledgehammer from be under the ring and he just holds oh, it. And people are like blood coming down his face usually. People going nuts in the crowd. Such a great it was always an oh fuck moment when he grabs the sledgehammer. You're like, if you're rooting against him, you're like, oh fuck. And then if you're rooting for him, you're like, here oh, we go. Fuck. About to get the win. <laughs> So that's basically her, you know, signature weapon in Star Wars at this point, and I love it. I think it works for her being the welder in the first place. She knows how to use a hammer. Boom. Vane senses defeat, ditches the captain's ship just as he takes aim at the villagers, and then Mando and Bo team up, and they're able to take the ship down before they can get to any of the villagers. I would assume uh, the Shard, what was his name? Gorian, uh, Gorian Shard. I would assume he's dead from this. It's a shame to yeah. see him go. He was a good little side villain. For he got he got a lot of mileage out of him, and if it's the end of him, which I think it is, like we could have had more. But it's like that's the thing about pirates; they it's kind like the of are disposable things. Yeah, exactly. That who's like a pirate in his own right, right? Basically, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Grief Karga announces that the Mandalorians now have their own land on Navarro. He's like, all the, all the land west of whatever now belongs to the Mandalorians. They're accepted. They have a new home. He said, you might not have a home planet. But you do have a home. And the Fricks live. All of the Fricks appear to be alive at the end of it. They were going nuts. I was happy to see them. I, I, uh, when he gives the land, I almost think of in, like, um, Game of Thrones when, like, they give, like, a bunch of the – they said they are going to give the land to the uh, wildlings. Like, well, there's probably a ton of land that no one really wants that much in, like, the lava lands. And they just give it, like, in the north there's so much winter. Give it to the wildlings. Everyone's fucking happy. And it looked like they went back to the old covert from season yeah. one. Because that's where the armor wants to talk I to I forgot Bo. that they started there in season I know. one. I didn't yeah. watch the previously on, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. They were hidden there. So she wants to talk to Bo, and she seems to believe her about the Mythosaur sighting at this point. Yep. And she's like, you can take that helmet off because I tr trust you as the one to unite all Mandalorians. The ones that don't wear helmets, the ones that do wear helmets, 
you're the one. Let's go upstairs. Let's tell everyone that. They do go upstairs. They tell everyone. First, people are like, whoa, what the fuck? Why is she not wearing a helmet now? They're like, she's going to unite all Mandalorians. Is this going to cause a lust for the Darksaber? Is she going to feel like she can't lead all Mandalorians without that Darksaber? I don't know. Because you're going to have... So, first of all, Bo has the religious fanatics vote, which is huge. Yep. I, I watch my wire. Once you get, like, the, the deacons on your side, that was a big part about it. You have to get all the... You get the teachers' unions. You kind of got to get all that. Bo has a big contingency now. However, there's, like, probably the die diehards who think that the, this is the way people are like, yeah, but they don't even fucking listen to the Darksaber <laughs> rules. Yeah. Bo got the fucking dark, Darksaber just as I think other people have picked it up. And, yeah, it was, like, handed to her. but Not but, handed, but kind of, yeah, handed yeah. to her. And I'm just, like, and I know it's going to probably come down to them going to have to fight it out for it or something. And I'm just annoyed. I'm like, she fucking got it, man. Just give it to her because I, I, I don't want, I, I don't want, I don't like confrontation. Maybe yeah, I should Mando be doesn't Star really Wars. want it either. Mando's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'll use this thing if I have to. And every time he does, he slices off another piece he's of his skin. So They're making like skin grafts it. for him every time he uses the the dark saber. He's gonna like, like, do you want him to fight me with it? Because he's gonna probably kill himself by mistake. Yeah. And then we're down another Mando. Yeah, and we can't be down Mandos if we want to take back Mando. Next season, he's gonna look like the guy from Monty Python. Tis just a flesh wound. <laughs> yes, exactly. By the way, I want them to name their plot of land New Mandalore. Oh, that's good. So like, like New York. Like New, well, I was saying New like, Amsterdam. Like New England. Like the, the English people came yep. over, and then like uh, New Asgard when the Asgardians moved yes. down there too. Yeah. Tune into the dozen tonight. End game oh. question. It's not related to that. Just <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten it right. You told me the, the question. I would not have gotten oh, it. Oh, you so wouldn't good have. On yeah. You. Yeah. So the ending of the episode, almost Twilight Zone-esque, I felt like. We see yes. Captain Tiva discover a transport ship that looked like an Imperial ship, but I guess they're transitioning all of those into the New Republic now. And it's the ship that Moff Gideon broke out of. You see that the ship has some damage on it. I love those ships, too. Oh, so good. Yeah, with the fold-up wings yeah, and everything. Yeah, the fold-up wings. That's my—behind Millennium Falcon— Maybe two or three with Star Destroyers. We saw some Y Wings this episode too. I thought yeah. that was cool. Did you yeah. have the closed caption on for that scene? Uh, yes, I did. It said psychedelic rock yeah. place. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that's what I would call psychedelic rock, but I guess it's, it's Star Wars. It's no, not it's not. It ain't jizz. It ain't jizz. <laughs> but he goes into this ship. Well, he sends like the R2 unit into this ship, a little drone to see, scope it out for himself. And there's no survivors on board. Moff Gideon is not on board. And he sees some Beskar on board. He's like, did the Mandalorians have to do with the breakout of Moff Gideon? Boom, episode over. This is the best cliffhanger we've gotten this season yep. for sure. And it makes me want next week's episode, like, right now. Did they break him out? Like, I don't think our Mandalorians broke him out. Hell but no. I think there could very much be bad Mandalorians that went broke him out. We've seen bad Mandalorians in the past. Do you think that they? he's, like, their guy because he had the Darksaber? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I... I, I, like, Moff Gideon, I forgot, was even a thing. I'm I like, know. oh, I, figured, I thought he was in some maximum. I guess it's like Magneto's always going to break out of jail just like he is, no matter how little metal you're going to have. They put him into Arkham Asylum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, they always fucking get out. Uh, the best car being in there is like a real, it's like a WTF. Like, And, and I think they're going to pry give us some misdirections maybe along yeah, or the way. did they get framed straight up? Like yeah. It was part of it, Kane. It was Kane all along. It's got to be Kane, Kane, Kane. 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 She could have planted some best car from Moff Gideon's old collection. I'm sure he had some. Yeah. He, he was part of the guys that like did the whole purge and everything. So I don't also, know. Also, did you know the R2 that little it could just turn into a little drone? I didn't know that, and I was like, that must be new technology yeah. they didn't have back in the Return of the Jedi times, My right? My sweet R2 has like yeah. fucking so many features that I didn't even know about. Yeah. Do you think R2 has Bluetooth on him? At this point, yeah. Yeah. I think he does. does. <laughs> he probably does. He but, probably has like a, a, one of those that pop out. It's a speaker for parties at this point. And I guarantee he turns it up when the curse words are coming on. Like R2 <laughs> loves that kind of yeah. like humor too. I, love I, I always humor. loved the idea that everything R2 is saying just had to be bleeped. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a vulgar guy. He said, welcome to the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Didn't use freaking. <laughs> um, do you think the overlooming threat is Moff Gideon? in this season, or do you think it is Thrawn, someone even above his head? I think it'll be, I think we'll see Thrawn, a Thrawn teaser will be the end of it. Yeah, I think Whether so or not too. it's even we see the blue skin, or it's just, no, but this guy's the real problem. You know, like, yeah. I, 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 you know, I think... Um, that would be an all-time reveal. To Going back to Giancarlo Esposito's show where I first saw him, I feel like uh, Moff Gideon is Tuco. Yeah. Whereas like, I you think, think he, this guy's really bad. Yeah, well, you're like, just scratching the surface. This guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tight, tight, tight. Fucking Tuco is such a great character, man. I great character. I love Tuco. One of the best. Um, before we get out of here, 
I do have a, a food take that I wanted to run by you. We've had a lot of food discussions on my mom's basement. Some wars over it. Some wars, some things that we bond over, mint chocolate and stuff like that. I wanted to just run this by you. This was such a legitimate take that ran through my head as I was eating one of these the other day. I think Oreo Cakesters okay. are the best product Oreo has ever put out. I don't think it's – now, I said it. I don't know if it's a controversial take necessarily. I know a lot of people are huge on Oreos. I'm not, personally. I like the thin Oreos better than the double stuff Oreos. I'm right, one of those l- guys. Let's just dip that one in the bud right now, because it's going <laughs> to cause another. I've heard the take, and I understand it, too, because I, I understand they are good. They They're are really good. good. I, I, I just like the ratio better on those, especially the ones that are mint thins. Yes. And we're, they're, they're we're kind of, guys. Exactly. They're kind of like thin mints. I think the Cakesters, though, blow Oreos out of the water. I'd rather do two Cakesters than a sleeve of Oreos. So... I will say this. I personally think the double stuff is its best product. Maybe there's some nostalgia or I've probably eaten a million double stuffs in my life, right? Cakesters, the, but if your love, if you're giving love to Cakesters, I ain't going to stop the love. So okay. I'm happy okay. you're happy. If you know what I mean? I'm I think Cakesters are so good. Oreo Cakesters. I'm, yeah, I, I'm so happy they brought them back. So and I remember good. Jeff D. Lowe like, was crying tears of joy yeah. when he had them. And he, we did a, like, a taste test in Chicago when he brought them back. And we're like, they still taste like they did in the 2000s or 90s whenever they had them. So that, I will say, the double stuffed is my number one. And I will say there's these like the fudge covered, the fudge thins or something like that. Oh, yeah. You get yourself, a, and I think they even have mint for those. You get yourself oh, there and you're going to go, oh, boy. The fudge stuffed are good. Mama Fox is a huge chocolate covered Oreo person as well. I love a chocolate covered Oreo. I like Oreo. the um the the white fudge that they have around Christmas. Or at least you used to have them only during I'm Christmas. I'm not a big white fudge guy. No, no. They were special. Not white fudge, not white chocolate. Ah, uh, okay. I like them, but I like it is a little bit of a different taste. Where if you don't like it, like I'm not. That's that was like my number one back in the day. I ranked like best Christmas treats, and I think I had the white fudge as my number one. Yeah, but it's not I'm a Christmas everyone. tree cookie guy. I well, think. Look at us. We're yeah. not arguing. And no, uh, this I will is say a this. pleasant Maybe discussion. we'll have to tier the Oreo catalog one day. Oh, that'd be we'll fun. Tier, and the S tier may look a little different for us, but I think Cakesters, it's like A tier. The cream in the worst Cakesters. Tier, I don't think of that. The cream in the Cakesters is like God's nectar. It yeah. is so fucking good. I, I can't even tell you how good those things are. And those are. cakes are fucking so goddamn moist. They must have so many I know, I don't know how. Chemicals in. It's just like chemicals that we our brains couldn't even comprehend. Yeah, you're it's right. It's shit from a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> it is. It's like you when know? we went to Galaxy's Edge, they said, not meant for human consumption. Yeah. <laughs> I will. This is the one take I've had forever, and I stand by even though it would kill me. I want to have just Oreo stuff. Like the actual oh, cream. Oh, just to scoop the stuff out? Yeah, because they'll always be like, oh, there's like an Oreo this, an Oreo that. Very rarely do you have anything outside the actual cookies or like the cakesters that are actually Oreo, you know. Maybe for your birthday, I'll just scrape it off like a bunch of <laughs> Oreo boxes, put it into a big vat for you. And you just see like all the old cookie crumbs <laughs> yeah, and the old yeah. cookies. It'd be the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Before. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see about that. It might be a lot of work. Who knows? Um, we did get into, uh, it was my niece's birthday party this weekend. We got into the Laffy Taffy discussion at the party. One of my cousins brought it up and was like, can we talk about how ridiculous that was and how justified Clem was for walking Thank off the God, podcast? God, I thought you were going to tell me he was another banana guy. Everyone thought I was crazy except for my mom who put me onto banana Laffy Taffy in the first place. So that's, yep. And listen, uh, my dad, his favorite Starburst is lemon. So, weird. And, exactly, weird. If he got me into lemon, I probably would become a drone just like you True. are to your mom. So True. I don't know what Rob's talking about. He always, <laughs> I love the banana. He we used to share them and watch the movies together. And then one of my little cousins tried one, and she said it tasted like vanilla ice cream. And I was like, I disagree. But I still love it. it the, uh, there is actually something it tastes like that no one ever can put their finger on it, but I know what it is. What? Sadness. Oh, oh, yeah, we're gonna battle. It was a pleasant discussion. <laughs> until then, let's end the podcast. Let's come up I'm with a hashtag note. for the people. What do we got? <sighs> it was see. a good one. This one. What do we have? This one. Hashtag. Do we want to do like the character name? The the guy from Rebels. His name was Zeb. So the first thing that came to mind for me was like a Pulp Fiction. Yeah, reference. I would say Zeb's, Zeb's dead. dead. Zeb's alive. Zeb's alive. Zeb's, Zeb's alive. alive. All right, that's Zeb's good. Alive. That's good. Instead of Zed's dead, Zeb's alive. <laughs> So use that hashtag if you've made it to the end. Hit us up on Twitter. Tell us what you thought of the episode. Let us know if you think that the big villain is going to be Moff Gideon or Grand Admiral Thrawn or someone else. Could be somehow Palpatine has returned before the last time he returned. Fucking guys everywhere at this point, yeah. Who knows? Make sure you like the video again, and we'll see you next week.